children of the Heavenly Father. And we will sing the last two stanzas of that at the end of our service today to bring us to God, but also to win the victory. He died only once to do something about our sins as a substitute, an innocent person, a place of those who are wicked. And then Peter highlights the aspects of his exaltation. He was made alive in the spirit. And not only that, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits, to those who were disobedient long ago. His descent to hell was to proclaim victory. So when we recite that, as we're going to in a moment, the Apostles' Creed, and he descended to hell, it was a victory march. He went there to proclaim victory. His ascension into heaven as part of his exaltation. Jesus Christ accomplished this for you and for me. It is an encouragement to people who are likely to suffer unjust treatment from human authorities, not just in other words from a random act of mob violence or casual brutality, but perhaps even official legal persecution. And the point that Peter is making is that Jesus Christ suffered to win the victory over all of those enemies who bring us into suffering. Peter's point is that all of these authorities have received notice that Jesus Christ has overthrown their power. He is now sovereign, exalted, as triumphant. We can have hope when life is not fair because we know that in Jesus Christ all things are made right. He suffered for us to win the victory for us. And last, we can live with hope when life is not fair because Christ is at the right hand of God the Father. He is there, exalted at God's right hand, interceding for you as king. And someday we will see with our own eyes the exercise of his kingship. It may not look like it now in the midst of what you are going through, what all of us are going through. Life just doesn't seem to be fair. Why should we be suffering from this coronavirus? It just doesn't seem fair, does it? But because Jesus Christ has promised us a blessing in the midst of unfairness, because Jesus Christ as Lord over all of the unfairness, and because Jesus Christ suffered to win us the victory, and because Jesus Christ is at the right hand of the Father, we can live with hope in the midst of our personal, regional, even world unfairness. You have hope. You can have this hope. Come to Jesus with your fears, with your disappointments, with your bitterness, with all of your questions about unfairness. He will receive you and welcome you. And as his child, as uh, through Jesus Christ who suffered to bring you to God, as a child of the Heavenly Father, you too can live and will live with hope even when life is unfair. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you came into this very unfair world. And you have made things right. And even though we do not see the rightness of things, you have made a way for us to be blessed, encouraged, and strengthened, and to have hope even in the midst of this time of unfairness. May we see you, Lord Jesus, for you are our hope. 
in whose name we pray. Amen. I invite you to confess with me the Apostles' Creed as uh, the words appear on the screen with you. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers today, we want to remember, uh, give opportunity for you to uh, bring to the Lord what's on your heart and your mind. And so as we pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all the people according to their needs, we'll pause for a moment of uh, silence for you to bring to the Lord what might be on your heart today. And then we'll continue with our prayers and we'll use the refrain, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the pray faithful proclamation of Jesus Christ to those who do not know him, that through hearing the word of the Lord, many may be brought to faith and to the knowledge of the truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the agencies and institutions through which we love our neighbor and provide for those in need, for the destitute and homeless, and for everyone who suffers unemployment and underemployment, that we may aid them in their needs and assist them to find honorable labor to supply all their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the lonely who suffer the burdens of life without friendship or family, for those depressed or weary of pandemic measures, and for the fellowship of the church that we may bear one another's burdens and live in community with Christ as our head. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick and for those who suffer and those that we name in our hearts, that God would grant healing to their bodies, peace for their minds, and consolation in their grief and sorrows. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the nation, for those who lead our nation, for the end of the pandemic, for peace among nations, and for an end to terror and violence, that we may work for the common good so that justice may prevail, life be protected, and truth abound. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Lord, as we recall the obedient life and life-giving death of your Son for our salvation, we pray that you would strengthen our faith and make our hearts bold, that we may not fear, but that we may come to you as you intercede for us at the right hand of our Father. Hear us on behalf of Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, who even now stands before you on our behalf, pleading our cause with his blood, until the day when we are delivered from the changes and chances of this mortal life and stand before you in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace and his hope even in the midst of an unfair world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing together our closing uh, final two stanzas of the hymn well known to you, I'm sure, Children of the Heavenly Father.